by inserting a knot at the far end of the incision. Tie a standard reef knot, and then cut the short end of the suture very short, as we're going to bury the knot. Then, using the forceps, carefully retract the skin edge. Take a small bite of the subcuticular material and pull the suture through. Then, on the opposite side of the wound, insert a similar subcuticular bite of the suture material and gently work up the wound, ensuring that each bite does not go too deep into the tissues. Each new suture must be inserted almost opposite the exit of the previous suture, and this ensures that as the suture material is tightened, it draws the wound edges together, almost in the manner of invisible mending. The accuracy of the placement of the sutures will ensure an equal tension down the wound, and neatness of the closure. You can see here a needle going in, just at the skin edge, taking a bite of the subcuticular tissues and coming out at the skin edge. At the end of the incision, the needle can be exited about a centimetre away from the edge, and then the needle reversed and passed back almost through the same hole in the skin in the opposite direction. This can be repeated, passing the needle through the same skin hole, back again and then cut. For non-absorbable sutures, some surgeons like to use the collar and cuff technique. There is a crushed bead at one end, followed by a larger bead to stop the suture being pulled through the needle hole. Once the closure has been completed, a further bead and cuff are placed onto the suture end, and once the correct tension has been applied to the suture material, the metal bead is crushed using a substantial hemostat or bead crusher.